Hey gang, Scott here. I've been posting some videos about Topaz Lab Sharpen AI and I've recently added it to my workflow and got several questions about when do you turn to Sharpen AI in your workflow? At what point do you say, okay, it's time to go sharpen this thing? Is uh, Sharpen AI, this is for, you know, visual sharpening. It's just to, you know, correct things like camera shake or a photo that's just a little bit soft, that kind of stuff. So when do you decide to do things? Well, of course, it always depends on the photo you're working on. But the general answer is, at least for me, somewhere in the middle of my workflow. And I thought the best way to explain that is to use an example of a photo that I captured handheld. And you can tell that it's soft. This photo is very blurry. It's very obvious that it's blurry. Have it in Lightroom. That's my host application here. And I did some basics on it, right? You can see I've got the basics open here. I've done some adjustments to highlights and shadows and things like that. If I hit the backslash key, we'll see some before and after. You know, I kind of just opened up the photo a little bit, corrected some uh, of the white balance, did the lens corrections, you know, normal basic stuff. And at this point, I'm not going to expend more effort on the photo because it's obviously soft, right? It's obviously got camera shake problems. You know, this Sacramento sign, it's just fuzzy. And you'll notice I didn't do anything with texture or with clarity or trying to punch up the edges because the photo is soft. So this is the point now where, all right, I've done my basics. I know that I don't have anything you know, dramatically blown out or I've just got some other fundamental problem with the photo. It's now got a fundamental problem with sharpening. So let's send it over into Sharpen AI. Once you're in Sharpen AI, you, you do your normal sharpening workflow there, right? And this one, uh, the auto is saying motion blur. That's fine. I know this was a motion blur photo, but it's very blurry. That left side of that Sacramento sign was still a little soft. That's looking better. I might even push it up a little farther, let the AI get a little more aggressive. Whatever the settings are that make sense for your photo and sharpen AI, you do those, you dial those in, then hit apply, send that back to your host application. In this example, that's Lightroom. So you land back over in your host application. So I'm back in Lightroom and the photo's looking so much better, right? The, the, the subject is sharp, everything's looking crisp, it's good. And from here, I will continue to do styling on it. So, you know, workflow wise, got the basics taken care of, made sure I had no fundamental problems other than sharpening with the photo, then brought it into Sharpen AI, clean that up. And now back in Lightroom, I can do more work. And you know, the other very observant of you will have noticed I have this little before view on it right now. So I'm gonna hit the backslash key. And then I added more styling to just give it the, the shape and the feel that I really wanted for the photo. And that was the whole workflow. So when to jump over into Sharpen AI will depend a little bit on the photo you're working on. Like a different example might be if you have a photo where overall, things are crisp, maybe you're on a tripod, you don't have camera shake per se, but it's a raw file, maybe from a, an older camera, maybe there's just a little bit of atmospherics, something going on where things were just a little soft. You might do most of your development and styling work and then sharpen and then finish off with some tweaks at the very end. But generally speaking, I turn to Sharpen AI somewhere in the middle of my workflow. Make sure I have no fundamental problems with my raw file. Get it in the state that it's looking good, tones are in range. Then I'll bring it over into Sharpen AI. It's pretty similar to other plugin workflows in that regard. You know, don't want to be sending something over to a plugin when you haven't corrected for blown highlights or shadows. You know, maybe the exception is you're doing some heavy noise reduction work right up front on your raw file and you can maintain a raw file. You know, get like a DNG after that and then continue your workflow. But anyway, I hope that helps with the, the question of when does Sharpen AI enter my workflow? And uh, you can try that out on your own photos. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.